Good afternoon. My name is Wong Leiman and I am entering my final year of civil engineering degree in Monash University, Malaysia. I am currently having my internship as a site engineer trainee at Johan. The location of my site is the Erika Central Park Damansara. Today, we're going to talk about Bhopal, the way it is constructed and the theory behind it. Here are a few types of cast in situ piles which are constructed according to different required pile size and site conditions, such as Kaizen pile which has higher labor intensity. Hand dug Kaizen piles are recommended for sites which could not sustain large machines such as the boring machine. And micro pile which requires drilling machine, it is used for piles with diameter less than 600 mm. Lastly, ball pile, which is constructed with boring machine like BG. Ball piles are catered for relatively bigger and deeper piles. The visual representation of these three piling methods can be seen with reference to a tree. So, what is ball pile actually? When large high-rise buildings are constructed on top of soil, it imposes a large vertical load onto it. This may cause unequal settlement after a period of time, such as the Leaning Tower of Pisa. Hence, we need foundation to provide structure stability from the ground and to distribute the weight of the structure over a larger area in order to avoid overloading the underlying soil. Deep foundations like so are formed by a group of ball piles. The ball piles are responsible of transferring high structural loads into load-bearing soils and rocks. We will focus on the individual ball piles in this video. Next, we will talk about how ball pile is constructed. Firstly, Surveying works are carried out. This is a surveyor and this is a chain man. They are responsible of setting out power points, determine the offset of constructed piles, and to check the existing ground level of the working site. After they pack the corresponding power location, it will be marked. Then, the boring machine is mobilized to the area to bore the mark power point. Before boring commence, a banksman is responsible of checking the verticality and whether the center of the oval is precisely above the packed power point. Also, the drilling tool used here is a soil auger. Now we can visualize the cross-sectional view of the boring process. And next, I will show the actual footage on site. As you can see, the drilling tool used is the soil auger as mentioned previously. The construction of bore holes generally takes a long time. This boring process alone can take up to 5 days, while time may differ according to the power length, power size, and site conditions. Hence, the process is much easier to visualize in a time lapse. After boring a certain depth into the soil, temporary steel casing is to be installed to prevent existing soil around the hole to collapse. The casing installation requires a vibro hammer which is hung by a crawler crane. The vibro hammer clamps onto the casing and vibration helps to lower the casing into the soil. This is because it reduces the friction between the casing and the ground. The cause of collapsible soil may be due to high existing ground movements as large machines are moving around the construction area. Also, lateral force of soil tend to push towards the borehole. Hence, drilling fluids such as polymer, bentonite, or water 
are filled in to provide hydrostatic pressure as well as keeping the drill bit cool. Here we can see how the temporary casing was installed using the vibro hammer on site. In the recorded footage, banksmen are checking the verticality of the casing as well. This can be checked using the hung straight line which is 90 degrees to the ground surface. Next, the boring process continues until we reach the bedrock level. The drilling tool used here is the boring bucket. The boring bucket minimizes the collapse of soil compared to using the soil auger. Then, a different type of drilling bit is changed for the boring machine to core rock layers. For instance, the drilling bit shown in the animation is the core barrel. Once the drilling tool is changed, the boring machine will proceed with coring the rock socket for the bore hole. Once it is done, how do we know that the rock socket length is sufficient? The rock samples obtained will undergo point load tests which helps us to determine the strength and quality of the rocks. We have a video explaining point load tests in details. With the results obtained from PLT, we can calculate the shaft friction and end bearing capacity provided by the rock socket. Soils also contribute to the shaft friction, but it is relatively low. For instance, rock samples with lower PLT index indicates lower quality rocks, and we will require more rock socket length to achieve the required geotechnical capacity. Here is an actual on-site coring process. The speed is relatively slow in real time. Before concreting, there are two main quality checks, which is sediment depth and sand content of the bottom of the borehole. Accumulation of sediments at the bottom of the borehole may decrease the rock socket length and reduce the power capacity. If the requirements are not satisfied, base cleaning will be required such as air lifting and reverse circulation. Once the base is clean, the steel cage is lowered into the borehole, as shown like so. When the concrete truck arrives, we will need to do cube test and slump test. Here is an example of acceptable concrete slump, and here is a rejected concrete slump. Higher slump means higher workability concrete is easier to flow down the trimming pipe without hardening inside it and causing blockage. Also, low workability concrete may cause cool joints in the pile as it does not flow properly. This will have adverse effects on the pile capacity as well. Now the trimming pipe is lowered into the borehole and the concrete truck comes in to start the casting. This is concrete casting in situ, which means it is done on site. And the casting method used is trimming pipe method to prevent segregation. Free falling concrete from the top of the casing may result in segregation, where aggregates sink to the bottom and the top part are all pure cement. As the concrete truck arrives, Workers help to unload the concrete into the hopper and down the trimming pipe. The crane constantly moves the trimming pipe up and down to allow proper concrete flow. Once concreting is done, the temporary casing is removed with the same method as when we install it by using the vibro hammer. So now, a bore pile is completed. 
hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching.